I'm going to briefly talk a little bit about the structure of the cards. Um, so the one card, uh, Pantheos, which is zero in this deck, represents the god behind all the gods. It's the god principle beyond um, any of the sort of polytheistic approach. You know, each god and goddess, each archetype is a different facet of that oneness of Pantheos. And then we've got the um, Protogonoi, which I spoke about. And if you look on the back, they have got the egg as their symbol. Um, so the Protogonoi are cards number 17 to 24. And on the back, this little image here is represented by the egg-shaped glyph. And then we've got the Titans and they have got the diamond shaped um, image or thumbnail at the back. So the Titans are that sort of second and third generation of gods and goddesses, the more cosmic astrological ones. And then finally, the Olympians um, are the circle. So there we can, that's kind of a simple way of distinguishing those three different types of gods and goddesses. And then there are sort of further complexities and aspects um, on the back of the cards that I'll talk about now um, for those of you who have the cards. So for example here we've got um, sort of just a general explanation sort of a little bit more poetical you know speaking about what this um, god or goddess energy is about. Then this section here is just further information it's, it's you know based on some of the factual information that's come down to us. Then this next section is an explanation of the image and it's also got a nuance. So the nuance only applies to the Protogonoi. Um, the Protogonoi um, give a nuance to the other gods and with the two card spread that I'll explain in a moment, um, that nuance becomes um, important. So for example, in the case of this card, uh, the goddess of Chaos in this case, um, she, her keyword is potentializing or emerging. So that nuance emerging or potentializing when with another card will show you what energy is potentializing or emerging. So these protogonoi are mainly kind of nuance cards. The next section here is then about um, the divination. So if you draw this card um, on a daily level or weekly, um, this is what you'll look at as an answer to your question. And then at the bottom, we've got an affirmation. So what this card relates to. Of course, it's always difficult to interpret cards for ourselves. Um, because, you know, a card interpretation relates to, you know, intuition. You know, often we know ourselves too well or we're too invested in the answer to answer ourselves honestly. So kind of one of the best ways to work with these cards, if you draw a card, especially if you've got a question, is to look at the, uh, the affirmation because that affirmation is going to give you the information that you need to develop um, that question or to understand the question better or to take that energy further. So then next we've got um, the Titan gods and goddesses and the structure is pretty much the same. Um, you know, the, the, the factual information is here. In that middle box, we've got an explanation of the image, as is the case of the Protogonoi. But then we've got a keyword instead of a nuance. So those keywords are just to give you a better and easier understanding of that god or goddess, especially at the beginning when you don't know the energies yet. That's like a quick reference way of understanding the energy. Then next, of course, the divination here, which is the same. And then the one difference is at the bottom, we've got an astrology section. So that will be, um, in this case, it'll be Pisces and Pisces is mutable water. And that in itself says something about what the energy of that card is. And then there's a very brief um, explanation of what Pisces is about. So you could start to, you know, use, you know, this card to also understand better the Pisces energy or the astrological energy, um, whatever the case. Just as a note, um, these um, 14 
um, Titans in the current version of the deck um, are 14. There are, of course, 12 astrological signs. Two of those uh, goddesses, which are extra, um, don't aren't really Titans, but they are married to the other Titans. So I just added them in um, so that we get, get a full spectrum of what that third generation of Titans was about. Um, in the future um, version of the deck to come, the cards that I still have to complete, there will be the children of those Titans, um, like for example Helios and Selene, the gods of the sun and the moon, who are the offspring of Hyperion. Then next we get to the Olympians and what I've done is I've arranged the Olymp Olympians into um, the elements. So for example, the, elements of, the element of air is Zeus, Hera and Athena. And then Zeus is the king of air, Hera is the queen of air, Athena is the youth of air and then um, Hermes is the child of air. So we've got four different expressions going from the most immature to the most mature expression of that particular element. And um, I did this as an inspiration from the tarot because uh, with the court cards you've got a similar thing. We've got the king, queen, knight and page or prince and princess. So in the fire gods and goddesses, for example, we've got Hephaestus as the king, Hestia as the queen, Apollo as the youth, and Ares as the child of fire. So there's the element of fire there with those gods and goddesses. And then we've got Poseidon as the king, Aphrodite, queen, Artemis, youth, and Eros, Phanes as the child. And Eros is actually um, both a protogonos and also at the same time a um, Olympian. Um, they're actually in Greek mythology there are two versions of Eros. There's the, the Eros Phanes which is at the beginning of creation that holds that cosmic egg together and then there is the Eros that we all know from um, you know seeing Aphrodite with you know Cupid and his bow and arrow. The, the younger Cupid with his bow and arrow is perhaps a little bit more of a superficial version, but in that sense, in his association with Aphrodite, he does relate to, um, to the Olympians as well. So remember that Eros Phanes can be read as both a protagonist and an Olympian. And then finally, we have the gods and the goddesses of Earth, Hades, Demeter, Persephone, and Dionysius. And their tendency, very interestingly, is um, as this element of earth, of the deep earth, of the underworld relates to the process of physical death and then of course spiritual rebirth. And Hades, Demeter and Persephone are very much about that story of the rebirth from the underworld, the rebirth with the seasons and the cycle of, you know, spring, summer, autumn and winter. Um, not that of course is the cycle of the sun around the earth, but it also represents our spiritual growth process. And of course, you know, those Olympians, there's, there's so much to them and there's so much to discuss. I will do them in future videos. But the difference between, um, for example, the Titans and the Olympians is that here at the bottom, instead of an astrological section, which I did for the Titans, um, here I've got a personality section. So this is how these gods or goddesses, the Olympians, express themselves as a personality. And there I've got a balanced expression as well as an imbalanced expression for those gods and goddesses. And it's very interesting, you know, sometimes we relate only to the negative expression um, when we look at those interpretations. And that's very telling and that, you know, shows us, okay, we're playing out the negative side of this god or goddess. How can we cultivate the positive side of that god or goddess? Because you know, those negative aspects aren't happening for no reason. They are there to show you something or they are you know, demonstrating how you're playing out only the negative side and how important it would then become to cultivate the positive side. So that's the structure of the deck in a nutshell. I mean, of course, we've got other aspects, um, you know, just the image, you know, the image itself holds a lot of symbolism. So, for example, here we've got Zeus 
and you know Zeus is the father, the, the king of the gods, the, the king of heaven. And you know, he's sitting on his throne, of course, but then he's got his lightning, he's also the god of lightning, and his totem animal is the eagle. So, you know, most of the Olympians have got an animal, um, something else that represents what they symbolize, like also an archaic version of the god of the goddess, you know, as represented in you know the earliest representations. And here in the case of Demeter, um, we have an archaic uh, representation of her. Um, as a statue. So those symbols, of course, on the image side of the cards, give further information. Again, if you're looking at Zeus, and um, you know, one time you might see the eagle, so that speaks to you, that says something. What does the eagle represent for you? Other times you see the lightning, and that might be a lightning flash of inspiration that comes to you. The general interpretation of Zeus is of becoming the king or queen in your own reality, taking the reins in your life, becoming the master of your life and learning how to channel and direct your energy in the right ways so that you can attain the mastery, for example. The most important thing to do with the cards, if you want to do readings for others or for yourselves, is to familiarize yourself with them. And now I'm talking just more on a reading level, you know, getting information for yourself, about yourself, or about your life, or about a situation. Um, of course, you know, the, the cards are also conceived to be altar cards, you know, you can use the image on your altar to hold an energy, to radiate an energy, you know, to help you in your meditation, or to help you in the building of an alliance with one of these divinities. Um, but yeah, the, you know, the first step always is just spend time with them, get to know them, get to know the pictures, get to know what they stand for. One of the other aspects and one of the other reasons why I developed this deck was because it's a very nice way of understanding the different family trees and how the different gods kind of fit together and the messages that go around that. Like, for example, you know, the story of Iapetos, he's the god of death. His offspring are Epimetheus and Prometheus, um, the god of forward thinking and the god of regret. And from them come humans, you know, so humans are mortals. They are the great grandchildren, symbolically speaking, of the god of deaths, you know, so they're mortal. So that's kind of imprinted in us as humans. But then, you know, their parents are, you know, about afterthought, regret in being stuck in the past. And at the same time, they come from forethought, Prometheus, you know, he had to steal fire and wisdom from the gods in, in order to give us as humans an edge in the world. So there's, there's like very interesting associations and stories one can start to tell and piece together in terms of, you know, the messages these different gods and goddesses have.